What is up guys? Welcome back to another video. I know I've disappeared for such a long time, but that doesn't matter. I'm back now and hopefully more regular uploads coming soon. So let's start off with today's video, which is going to be 10 Premiere Pro tips that every Premiere Pro user should know. I highly recommend you check these out because they will drastically speed up your workflow. So without wasting time, let's dive right in. All right, guys, we're here in Premiere once again. So let's take our first clip as an example. We'll drag this over here. Just adjust it a little bit. Now the first thing is keyboard shortcuts. So if you didn't know, you can actually change the keyboard shortcuts. I know this is really basic. I thought I'd bring it up anyway. Uh, so what you could do is change the shortcuts to whatever suits you. They have certain shortcuts set by default. You can change them to suit your own workflow. And shortcuts are one of the fastest ways to speed up your workflow. So for example, uh, let's put ripple delete, which is gonna be our next tip actually. So let's remove the R. And all you have to do is simply drag it to whichever key that you want. So I'm gonna want it on the R, I'll put it there. And you could really do this with any kind of command. For me, I have the scale to frame size. Uh, by default, it's not set here, but I use it very often. So all you have to do is press B and it scales it to the full frame size. I'll show you what that looks like. So if you have a 4K timeline with a 1080p video on it, it'll look something like this. So all I have to do is press B and bam, it scales it to the full frame size. Alternatively, you could right click and do the same thing over here, scale to frame size, but I have it as a shortcut because I use it very often. So that's tip number one, shortcuts. So number two is gonna be the ripple delete. If you've ever used Final Cut, you know it has a magnetic timeline where when you cut one clip, it automatically collapses and merges them together. Well, you could do almost the same thing in Premiere. All you have to do is cut. So we're gonna cut this segment right here. So normally what you do is delete and then you have this gap right here. Well, if you right click and hit ripple delete or as a shortcut I just put R, it deletes it and then merges these two clips, uh, brings them close together so there's no gap in between. So this is really helpful if you have a timeline in the middle. You have so many clips on the right side and you just delete one and you have this whole gap and then you have to drag like 15 clips to really close that gap or or something like that. But all you have to do is right click or use a shortcut, ripple delete and bam, it brings everything closer together. That is ripple delete, saved a lot of time. Next up is gonna be the master clip. So when I first knew about this, it really, really blew my mind because it helped out a lot. So right here we have the same clip number 10, three of them, three segments of the same clip. So let's, for example, apply a little color grade right here. So if we applied it here, we have this lumetry. We have this lumetry effect applied to the effects panel. But if you go to the next clip, it's not there, even though they are from the same clip. Well, what you could do is go on to the first clip and instead of applying it to this effect over here, sorry, this effects panel, simply go to the master and then paste it over there. Now every clip that's number 10 is gonna have that same effect. So if we scroll over all of them, they all have that same color grade applied to it. Even if you cut it into different pieces, it's still gonna have that. So what it really does is applies the effect to that entire clip no matter where it is on the timeline. Instead of, instead of copying and pasting it to each individual one or having an adjustment layer over it, this really saves up a lot of time. You could do it with almost any effect, I believe. Uh, you simply drag it. Uh, like, I don't know, let's put, uh, so let's put like a crop for example, we drag it here. Now all of these clips will have that same crop effect because we applied it on the master clip. So you can see here, all of them have it. So that is really cool and it saves a lot of time. I really love this. So next up is gonna be markers. This really helps when you have a huge timeline with so many clips. Uh, because you, you'd be setting up different segments. For example, you're editing this part and then you jump and edit this part or you just have so many clips. It's really helpful to organize it. And I've been using this a lot lately and it is markers. You simply right click here, add marker, and then right over here. So all you have to do is hit the alt or option key and then drag it 
and you, now you have this little colored segment over here. You right click, edit marker, and you can add a name to it. For example, let's call it Forest Clips. And you could even change the color of that. You can add a comment. We're going to hit OK. So now you have a little comment on top that says Forest Clips. And you know now that this area under this place is going to be your Forest Clips. So it's really helpful when you have a really long timeline with so many clips. You could always do that to multiple multiple segments and like I said it's really it really helps out organizing your timeline next up is gonna be speed ramping this one is not really a tip but I find it I found it to be really helpful so normally what you do with speed ramping is right click go all the way down to show key show clip keyframes time remapping speed you drag it up and apply your keyframes over here so I find this pretty annoying because you have to always drag this whole thing up and then set your keyframes and do your whole adjustment. But alternatively what you can do is leave this as it is and simply go up to here, time remapping, speed, and do it over here. Apply your first keyframe, apply the second keyframe, and speed ramp it up or down, whichever way, ease in, ease out, the whole nine yards. So I find this to be really helpful doing it in the panel. Uh, some people prefer it over here, but for me, I like to do it in the panel. So that is another tip to speed it up for you. It's really helpful when you have a long timeline. It just gets really annoying dragging, up, dragging it up and down multiple times. So up next is a really small tip. I was debating whether I should add it or not, but I decided to. So if you use your arrow right and left arrow keys, it moves one frame at a time. Well, if you hold down the shift key while holding down the arrow, sorry, hold down the shift and then hit the arrow, it'll move five frames. So now you know, for example, you're at the beginning of the clip and you hold down shift. Now you know you moved five frames. So that's really helpful. All right, so up next is applying a default transition. If you have a couple of clips in the timeline and you want to apply your default transition, all you have to do is simply hit command D select the clip first hit command D and there you go it applied the default transition to the clip which is a cross dissolve you could change that default transition to be whatever you want you can simply go to the video transition that you want to set as default right click on it and set selected as default transition now if you want to change the length of the transition all you have to do is go up to preferences and hit timeline this pop up and you could change the default duration of that transition to however many frames that you want hit OK and there you go up next is something that has to do with keyframes so let's put our first keyframe over here for scale and let's put our second keyframe over here and set it to 150 so normally it would create a smooth zoom from the first keyframe to the next. What you could even what you could do to smoothen it out and in from the keyframes is right click on it and ease in into the keyframe. So now as it approaches the keyframe, it starts to ease in slowly into it or you could do ease out out of it. For example, let's ease out of this one and ease into the other one. So now it goes in smoother into and out of the keyframes. So that is really helpful. Uh, it really comes in hand. Uh, it's not useful for every situation, but some situations really warrant the use of this. Last but not least is going to be our volume keyframing. So this is really helpful when you have a voiceover and you want some ambient noise in the background, for example. All you have to do is come over here down to your volume section, hit down the command key and press wherever you want and that's going to set a keyframe. Move it a little bit, create your second keyframe, and now you have two keyframes. What you could do now is drag it down, and what that's going to do is create a smooth fade down in volume as you play the clip. So, so instead of creating a sudden change in volume, if you cut the clip and then this one is a higher volume, and then you would adjust this one by lowering down the gain. Well, what you could do is use the keyframes to create a smooth exponential fade with the volume. That is really helpful in voiceovers. Uh, if you want to add some ambient noise to the, to the video, it really comes in hand. Uh, you could adjust it if you want it to create more of a fade. Adjust it back, up or down. 
So if you want to increase the volume, decrease the volume, same thing. You could add more keyframes. Simply hold down the command key, add another keyframe. So the, your possibilities are really endless. So I found this to be really useful when you want to create voiceovers with some music in the background. So we'd use this technique as the person starts to talk and it really creates a smooth fade in the music in and out of it. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps a lot. And if you want to catch future uploads and tutorials, then subscribe down below. If you have any tutorial requests or you want to learn something on Premiere, then do not hesitate to ask in the comment section below. Also, follow me on Instagram because that's where all the cool stuff happens. That's it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time.